In today's episode of the podcast... William shares why he loves a cubicle. Jordan tells us why he's gone off Guinness. And there's a lovely letter about a magnet and a prince. And if you enjoy this episode, hit the like and subscribe buttons and watch new episodes on Wednesday and Friday. You'd have thought I'd walked in bollock naked today (laughs) because I arrived 15 minutes early. Yes. Wow. We all take bets on what time. There's a sweepstake that goes on. I'm down a lot of money today well, as to what time you would actually arrive. You all look shocked, even Adam, who's nice to me here. <laughs> you all well, it's because lo- he's relatively new, you given all, a few years. You all looked so shocked. I got up at 6am for this today. Did you? Mm-hmm. You got up at 6am to be... What's Where? your morning routine? Tell you what, start the episode and then let's have an insight into Jordan's morning routine. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Help I Sex With My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, what excuse should I use for being late to work? Oh. And <laughs> how do you get rid of the smell of cheese? It stinks in here still. still. We got sent some cheese, but it's still a bit wafty. Mm. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But... We're not your usual like the answer, are we, William Hanson, the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not, Jordan North, radio presenter. I'm more silver service, you're more community service. <laughs> We've never had that one before. I don't think so. Thanks to Chris for that one. That's very good. Um, should we have a drink? Yes, why not? Even though it's only nine o'clock in the morning. But that will not stop William Hanson. <laughs> um, by the way, that bottle of De Bonnet, which there is half uh, left, Oof. is the last bottle of De Bonnet in this studio. Oh, okay. Um, So please go gently with it. Oh. Um, Because apparently there are loads of other bottles, but they're all in Manchester. And I don't know why they're not down here. What are they doing in Manchester? Stuart's big boss, Stu, is is hoarding the tea. Oh, he's sick. Um, I'll tell you who we're going to toast. Who? Let's toast everyone who's bought a ticket to see us on our In Conversation with event for the book (laughs) law. We're not allowed to say tall. (laughs) We're not allowed to say tall. We were sent an email. A very stern email from our exec. I oh, know what's he called now, Stuart. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. so we've got executive producer Ben, and we've got um, chairman emeritus. Was chairman that emeritus. Sh- chairman emeritus Stuart after Rupert Murdoch's stepping back, but also being promoted. Yeah. He sent an email. He says, "Right, boys, I don't want you saying that this this book thing is a tour because it's not a tour. It's a it's a it's like a Q and A." And I don't want the tour. I don't want. I don't want those quarters that jacket people thinking it's a tour. Okay, it's not. Well, anyway, to everyone that's uh, bought tickets to the in conversation with William Hanson and Jordan North book events, thank you. This is to you. That will be the name of our actual tour when we fall out, and then after twenty years. What? What the reunion tour? Yeah, we get back in conversation with. <laughs> Cheers. Coming back together. That's what we'll call it. As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextedmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextedmyboss or you can write to William who promises in the fullness of time a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive self-seal envelopes. The address for that is on the website sextedmyboss.com. Uh, just on that, we should just say... Um Huge, huge letters that we get, and I'm, I'm getting better at getting through them. Um, if you have previously written in and you have had a reply, and I can remember replying to you, I won't reply. You only get one letter, okay? So you can write in again. It's but a bit harsh. I, well, I've got to come up with, I've got to, there are hundreds of letters. I have got to be strict. So if you keep writing, it's lovely that you're there. You can read and we'll read it. We'll have a lovely time. But I will only reply once, okay. if I remember. You need a PA. Um, my morning routine. Mm. So, <laughs> I, I, get, I think I've talked about this before. I could copy you now. Since Do you, you? I get up about six these days. Okay. That first hour, I just get a coffee. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are. Now, you see, I think we've talked about this. I try and hold off having my coffee now for 90 minutes. And then I, uh, I put the telly on for an hour, GMB. Okay. Wake up. Reply to my emails, my WhatsApps. Maybe. And where in where in the which reception room are you doing that? In? Shut up. And then yeah, so that's right. And then around about seven, eight, I'm go for a run or the gym, and then head to work. Head, we've always got pits on. Okay. So yeah. Nice. Mm. Okay. Lovely. And and what do you have? When do you have your breakfast? Uh, about tenish, ten ish, ten eleven. Oh. 
Okay, and what do you have? Uh, it's getting into ready break season, isn't it? At the okay. Moment. But yeah. in the summer, shredded wheat, fruit, egg on toast, avocado. Yeah. Wow. This is interesting. This, this is the best content we've ever done. Yeah. Let's talk about your cardigan. Thank you. I thought uh, you were never going to mention it. So it's a nice sort of oatmeal cardigan. Oatmeal? Oh, what would you call it? Producer Ben's jealous of it. For Ben to give a compliment. Hi, I really like your cardigan. So what, I believe this cardigan is, uh, it's a nice luxury designer cardigan. It's not design, luxury design, is it? Oh, is it? Okay. It's just That's normal. why it came at a very affordable price point. It's just, the, uh, the reason why I wore it is, I wore it yesterday for the first time. Mm. Got loads of compliments. Literally turned heads. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And got so many compliments for it. Were you wolf whistled? No, I wasn't. No. I don't think you can do that these days. No. Um, got loads of compliments, talked about it on the radio, then put a picture up. And you I was talked like, about your cardigan on the radio? You were on Radio 3? No, it was, it was good content, actually. It's okay. relatable. And uh, you want to try it sometime. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought I'm going to wear it today for the recording. Yeah, nice. So, uh, yeah. But I love it. I'm, it's, it's interesting good. that... I'm the... going to wear this all the time. Right, we'll be sick of it. The... The logo, mm -hmm. which normally on most, if you know, this is if, if it's the Ralph Lauren horse or the Tommy Hilfiger thing, it's normally on that side. This one, obviously, it's revolutionary. It's on the other side. Mm. What is the brand? It's uh, it's Pangea. Pangea. Mm. That was a that was an, a student night at the University of Manchester. When was, I was it? There. Yes. Oh, I never you. went, but well, I'm told it was. Thank you. That's my morning routine, and this is my cardigan. Also, I've got to say, Gene Devers. Not yes. only do William and I now do a podcast together that we've done for five years, and you copy my morning routine, and copy his morning routine, and my bedroom. Um, don't get started. We also do curry and keeping up appearances nights. And now, apparently, we also spend weekends together in the Cotswolds. We had a lovely time, didn't we? <laughs> what is my life? Oh, it was, it was amazing. Exactly. It was a beautiful weekend. Still a bit too warm for me. I love the summer, but I want it to be a bit autumny now. Okay. Well, that's global warming for you. Yeah. It's, it's going to be really hot this Sunday as well. Oh, is it? It's going to be 26 degrees or something. Oh, my God. That's mad, isn't it? I want it to get a bit in cold In October? Now. I've got my new Cardi. And a big hoodie. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I've got a new big coat that I can't wear. I know, Ben's got a new big coat that he can't wear. Gosh, how do we live? I know. So um, we had a lovely weekend in the Cotswolds. You made me get that roast on Sunday. At, yes. Um, at, I, at quarter to one. I was so annoyed. That was, but yeah, wasn't it delicious? So we came and met you um, for brunch at, mm. at half twelve. Yeah. And I'd just got back from the gym and been for a swim. So I was like, the brunch had finished. I thought I'll get a burger. And William and Mikey persuaded me to get a roast at one o'clock. Who has a roast at 1 p.m.? Roast is like three o'clock. No. Also, yeah. So, um, but actually, you also said to me when the, the burger went past to another table, you went, oh, actually, I'm glad I had the roast. I was doing that to make you feel better because you could tell I was disappointed. The roast was great, but I should have got the burger. I've been thinking about that burger. All week. Did you have the beans on toast the next morning? No. I got the, I went to the little deli place yeah. and got their breakfast bun. Oh, it was fit. Oh, was it okay? Yeah. But I did get the Guinness cake. Oh, did you enjoy that? Yes. yes. Thank you for the recommendation. Well, that was more Mikey's recommendation, to be fair. But yeah, we had a, uh, a really nice weekend oh, together. Oh, I was doing some, talking of Guinness, I was doing some filming um, for CNN at uh, Fortnum and Mason a few weeks ago. And then you, the, the top plate, don't get excited. The top plate is the, the sort of where the cakes are on the stand. Uh, they have a little Guinness uh, loaf thing. You know where we went for afternoon tea a few years ago? Oh, yeah. And now one of the cakes for autumn is this little Guinness cake. I thought, thought of you. Okay, I've... It's... I think I'm off Guinness. <gasps> I know. But you just had the Guinness cake. I don't say this easily, Jane Davis. You know how much... And it's usually around about this time. Oh, my God. This is the biggest have I changed ever. <sighs> Ben, I know, don't, because it's making me upset. I love Guinness, right? Well, clearly but not anymore. I, it's usually round about now I switch over from lager to Guinness. Yes. I've had three pints of it, and it's just not going down well. And I think, hear me out, I think it's because it's been so hot that um, publicans aren't looking after their Guinness properly. So I had one on that Saturday, uh, on yeah, Sunday yeah. with you. It was fuzzy. I don't know if it's me going off Guinness. Now, when you say it's fuzzy, as someone who's sipped Guinness once in Dublin and, and nearly gagged, what, what is fuzzy? That was a good night. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's just, it wasn't smooth. It was a bit fuzzy. 
Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, like when you have milk and it's off and it's a bit fuzzy. Well, apparently. So I'm not saying I'm off Guinness, but I'm I'm genuinely worried. I'm really worried. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye on it, Jordan. And a couple of weeks ago, I went to watch Burnley Man United. Yes. And how, did that, of, and how did that go? I had a pint of Guinness there and I was like, oh, it's not going down well. This. I'll just have another lager. What's up with me? Well, maybe it's also global warming as well. Maybe oh. you all enjoy Guinness in November, December. <sighs> it's really worrying me. Anyway, other than that, how's... Um, I'll keep you updated. How's your week been? Uh, yes, my week's fine. Other than um, at the gym, I lost my trainers. So, yeah. The... I did this. Oh, <laughs> another thing you're copying. <laughs> um, I went, like the, the time before, I obviously, I took my trainers off to you know, get undressed, go and shower and left them under the bench and then put everything in my kit bag and just left them there. Mm-hmm. Anyway, luckily someone had, I, after a lot of searching, uh, handed them in at the front desk and I was having to describe the trainers. And I was like, they're a pair of blue Skechers trainers is what I was saying. And Skechers? What are you in year six? And they, uh, anyway, they were sort of looking on their log and they went, we've got some blue and pink Skechers trainers. I was like, well, I wouldn't call them pink. Oh no, God. I'm not having pink trainers. I'm gay. Um, <laughs> I said, they're blue, maybe with a slight pink accent, but I would more call it red. Anyway, so after this interrogation... She then eventually went and then insisted, do I have a photo of me in the trainers? What? Because she didn't believe they were my, my trainers. I mean, you're... She, and so I am not the sort of person, she knows me, this receptionist, I'm not the sort of person to, to just think, oh, I've forgotten my trainers, I will purloin some trainers from the lost property that so happened to fit me. She was really in, interrogating me and I felt like a terrorist. And I think what I'm going to say to all people that are in charge of lost property is give people the benefit of the doubt. I actually did find a photograph of me wearing the trainers. In fact, it was a video I sent to Mikey when I bought those trainers in Amman, when I was deep in Amman, remember, a few years yes. ago for, for six weeks. I had sent Mikey a picture of me walking down the hotel corridor in the new trainers going, new trainers going to the gym or something. And luckily I found that video. And did you get the trainers back? Yes, but they had also, in the, in the sort of the bag they had put them in, someone had obviously left their swimming trunks, so they had put someone's wet swimming trunks on top of my trainers. Mm. And they went, are these yours as well? I went, no, they're not. Oh. Thanks for putting them in the same bag. So my trainers, I have subsequently washed them. Mm. Ball mm. juice. Not ball juice, just sort of muzzy, chlorine wet, dampy, oh, awful smell. Mine never got handed in. I thought, nothing of it. I thought, I'll go back to the gym tomorrow. They'll be handed in. Mm. So I went and I'm like, oh, some trainers have been handed in. Somebody robbed them. Well, you've probably got nicer trainers than me, so I suspect mine got handed in because nobody wanted them. Nobody wanted them with an <laughs> accent of pink. Whereas yours were probably half decent. Yeah. Yeah. What else has been going on? Uh, what else has been going on? I love a cubicle. I don't want to sound peak homosexual here, but... And this is I don't mean this in a, in a George Michael sort of way, but... When I go to the loo anywhere, in a hotel, in a restaurant, and obviously I don't use urinals, we've, we've talked about this, if the cubicle is what I call an enclosed cubicle, it's not one of those sort of like, you know, where the, the door is like a half door. Mm-hmm. And you lock the door and you just, you're just safe for a minute. And I think I probably need to talk to a team of professionals about this. Yeah. But you're just sort of, you've got your own space. Have you had a traumatic experience in no. a toilet cubicle before? Well, I wouldn't call it traumatic. But I, <laughs> it, it just, yeah. It's just nice. And I'm finding myself just, and just standing there. Just, you know, I'm not doing anything, just to be calm. Are you telling me you've just been hanging around toilets going into cubicles this past week? Well, I've just been, no, well, not, not past week. I mean, I've used cubicles all my life, Jordan. But the, just to go in and, and just be still. Oh, okay. I think it's quite nice. And just nobody can get you. You can't hear anything. I don't like the locked ones because I always feel like I'm going to get stuck in them. At least when they're like half. Well, you're so claustrophobic. You can, you can crawl under or like if you got stuck, someone could pass you a bottle of water underneath or something. <laughs> That's how I... That's how, so if you went into a cubicle, yeah. do you lock it? Or do you just... If, no. Are you one of those awful people that just leaves the door open? Uh, yeah, yeah. What? But if, how about if you're sitting down on the I, I don't... Tray? I won't. Okay. Yeah. You won't watch? I don't tend to... I wait. I, I like my own toilet. That's all I'm going to say. We had someone at school. I won't say his name, but he lived a three-minute walk from school and he would always go back home to go to the loo. Don't blame him. If you had a shit in our school... And somebody's seen you having a shit in, in my secondary school. Mm. Yeah, you'd be known. That'd just be your nickname. It's like, it was, it, it was like Skiddy Sam, 
Right. Skiddy Sam. We went swimming in year seven. He took his box off. He had skiddies in him. Oh. To put his trunks on. Everyone was throwing him. Awful. Children can be so cruel. Everyone was throwing him around thinking he was called Skiddy Sam till year 11. But he's laughing. And this isn't Sam your friend now? No, no, no. no. This was first high school I went to. But he runs his own building company now. He's got a massive house and stuff, so. Who's he's laughing now? Yeah, who's laughing now? Yeah. That's Skiddy Sam. He's probably got two cardigans. Yeah, I bet he has. Yeah. I bet he's got three. So, yeah, I would never go... Mm. At school, okay. I once got sent home. I had to, for stomach ache. Because well, you hadn't in year ten. Because I really needed a poo, but I won't go in school. So I got sent home. Went home, <laughs> had a poo, and then was right for the rest of the afternoon. And my mum went mad. Oh, I've just watched real- Crossroads with my mum and Jill. <laughs> Talking of poo, I'm sorry, we don't poo. do poo. No, okay, talking of gut health, let's put it that way. When we go up to Manchester for our In Conversation With events in partnership with Waterstones, I can go and have a colonic. Can I come with you? With Helen, what, his and his colonic? Can I'll come with you, will you book me in? We're not having a three-way colonic, Ben. <laughs> oh, Ben can Stop come as waving. well. Oh, can I, I've heard it's There's great a, for you. Oh, it's phenomenal. And it helps you lose weight, doesn't it? It's, it's got so many benefits. I, book me in for one. Okay, I will message Helen. I yes. have not had one, because as you know... We're not filming, have we? <laughs> okay, no way. We I, could audio record, potentially. No, but I draw the line there. Can we I have a bit of privacy, please? It would be like when Jordan did that toilet in Monica. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, make that look like Beatrix Potter. Yeah. I have previously talked about this back in Series 1, about my love of a colonic. When I have not had a colonic since moving to London. Uh, I would only ever go to Manchester, as the joke was, I go to Manchester to have the shit taken out of me. And I am desperate to see Helen. It's okay. good for your skin. It's good for your sleep, weight loss. If there are, on a serious note, any sort of potential problems brewing, it can detect that. So, yeah, it's very good. Book me in. Okay. Um, no. In fact, remind me in the break. I will text Helen. Okay. Uh, should we also talk about the podcast awards? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I, met the news, I met the news agents. Yeah. You did? Did you meet them? Well... I seen them. They were two rows in front of us. <laughs> I, when they won, I was buzzing. I know Emily Maitlist did scooch past us. Oh, in our she row. did. Yes. She did. I met the news agents who I love. She's wearing some lovely boots. She was. Mm. Um, we should have saw that we think there was a lady who may have been flirting with Ben, <laughs> who was sitting next to him, and for, for about five minutes. I mean, I thought I was awkward around girls, but bloody hell, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> so it was like he didn't know where to look, did he? I think this. Girls flirting with me, and I'm worried Cat might find out if I've got the scent of a woman on me when I get home. So um, <laughs> it was really awkward to watch for an hour. We Ben was just trying to make this girl was trying to make conversation with Ben, and I he know. didn't know where to look, did he? No. I then turned to my right, and everyone on Ben's row had disappeared. Yeah. So I put that on my on my Instagram. Yeah. It's quite quite cute. Um, but no, we had a nice time. Um, we didn't win, sadly, the Listener's Choice Award. We were in the top five, so we're very grateful for everyone who uh, voted. Thank you. Uh, and congratulations to the podcast Red Handed, who, who won it for the third year in a row. And what? No, no, I'm being, I'm being genuine. And uh, we did get, and it's just behind Jordan, the Silver Best Entertainment oh, Award. Oh, great. So thank you. Did you drop that on the way home? <laughs> You were pissed again, could you go weren't and, you? Jordan, could you go and get it off the shelf, please? It's behind Did you. Did you drop it on the way home? No. Oh, you knob it. There we go. So thank you to our friends within the podcast industry. <laughs> Silver's all right. <laughs> yes, they're, they're not our close friends because we only got silver. Silver's good. That's quite a weight. Yeah, I think silver's a lot nicer than gold anyway. You did say that. Yes, exactly. Um, yes, look at that. Not a scratch or a crease. <laughs> Certainly pays to go for the best. It's like one for the gays. Keeping up appearances. Yes. It's when she throws the holiday brushes out the window. Why? Uh, because she's trying to get word back to Sonia Barker Finch that she's uh, uh, going on holiday. For the record, I've seen that episode. I've absolutely seen it. That's one I've seen. Please don't organise <laughs> another night. Oh, it's only half an hour, that episode. Oh, I've absolutely seen it. But yeah, uh, we, we had fun at the podcast. We seen loads of each other last week. We did, yeah. literally. Yeah. I think there were like four days. Yeah, what, what, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Oh, then cat ben- died. Bloody hell. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't mean it like that. That's a... No, of course. That's a... Um, I'm looking at Ben. That's a northern saying for 
You know when someone's trousers ride right up the legs like that? Well, when they sit down. Yeah, you say it's the cat died. It's Why? cat died because it's like means your trousers are half mast. I think. I didn't mean like that. Sorry. The, the hours must fly by in the north. Yeah. Oh, Spencer Matthew said very nice things. Yeah. Um, Jamie Lang said uh, very nice things. I met his wife. Yeah, they're all lovely. Jamie's a good guy. Yeah. Was, well, are we going on, we going on there podcasting? Potentially, I don't know. So yeah, we've had uh, a lot of time together. Yes. And a weekend in the Cotswolds. Yes, but the good news is next week I'm not seeing you. No, you're going. When are you going away? Uh, I'm going on Friday. Where are you going? I'm going to Venice. You, uh, working or pleasure? Uh, pleasure. This is a holiday that some friends have given us, which is very, very kind of them. Uh, so we are uh, going to go and enjoy Venice. I'm gone. You've got friends that have given you an holiday. Yes, it's a wedding present. Who gives someone an holiday? Who are you friends with? Judith Chalmers. <laughs> how, how rich are your friends? Well, it's very, very generous of them. Who gives Adam? Ben, have you ever been given a holiday by a friend? You're lucky to get a lift up north. Never mind a <laughs> bloody holiday. Well, three nights in Venice would be lovely. Although the airline we're flying with, we get an email going, oh, yeah, we've cancelled your flight, so we've moved you to a flight 36 hours later. It's like, oh, well, our three-night holiday has suddenly become a two-night holiday. Oh. Anyway, I've managed to get with still a three-night holiday. I've moved the flight forward, but not um, Bloody not hell, the original. fair enough. Okay. Yes, which I, I've been to Venice before. Uh, Mike has never been. Did you know I've sung in, um, is it St. Mark's Basilica? The the main church. Is that where they go to get healed? No, that's Lords. Oh. Yeah. No, that's cricket. No. <laughs> what are you on about? Um, oh, it's too early. We need to stop these early episodes. <laughs> um, you're the ones that can never do Fridays. Anyway. <gasps> what, 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 where have you sung it in? St. Mark's Basilica. The, the, the chapel. We did a choir trip to Italy. When of course I, you did. When we were at school. And we were invited to sing... In St. Mark's Basilica. We went to Hadrian's Wall and it got c called off because of foot and mouth. <laughs> <laughs> did. <laughs> did. We were all buzzing for it as well in year yeah. six. Couldn't go up to Hadrian's Wall and then foot and mouth happened, so. Nice. Is that I where that tree is? What? Yeah, no, it yeah. Was. yeah. I remember. Don't bring that up, Christ. I remember there was a wall that was just a small wall that was redone uh, very near where my parents used to live. Uh, and someone put a sign up saying Adrian's Wall, because obviously he was called Adrian. I thought it was hilarious. Adrian's Wall. <laughs> I was 12. Um, right. Should we go on to uh, Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week? Let's. Here's the jingle. If you like a chap who's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat with our Jordan. And if a giggle is what you see, Sure to love Jordan's jolly joke of the week. Cha cha cha. Cha cha cha. Nice. Okay. Can I just say, and we are not getting rid of this feature, but I'm, um, I'm struggling for not? jokes at the moment. I th well, our, our Lee's not sent me in ages. Well, text him. Okay. Should we set up an email address? No, Sorry, just. Text no, if you wanted to send some jokes, DM me or. Or we can come help, up with a new feature. Help at sexinmyboss.com. Yesterday, my brother accidentally swallowed some weed killer. And I'll tell you the punchline after the break. <laughs> All right, Gene, the others, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, before we go on to your problems and dilemmas, it's time for Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week's punchline. Yesterday, my brother <laughs> accidentally swallowed some weed killer. Fortunately, he saw the fungi side. <laughs> Was that right? Yeah. I went to the doctor, said, have you got anything for wind? He gave me a kite. <laughs> Are you sure you're not going to kill this feature? I don't get that one. We could, or alternatively, we could just oscillate between wacky word of the week and etiquette No. Oh. No, I'll find oh, some. Oh, he produced it. Tell you what, producer Ben, you can do a feature as of January. Juggling scene's fun. I just don't mm. have the balls to do it. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Pleasure, Ben. In joke. Uh, right. I buy my <laughs> guns from a guy called T-Rex. He's a small arms dealer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks to the book, All New Dad Jokes. Please bring another one out for Christmas. <laughs> yes, actually, can we look if they are bringing another one out? Okay, what have we got? Uh, okay, this is from Emma. No church notices? Uh, not yet, we'll do that in a minute. Okay. 
Okay, this one is from Emma. Dear William Jordan EPB, please send help. I'm a reasonably intelligent, well-rounded, kind woman in the prime of her life. I clean my teeth twice a day, eat my veggies, and always recycle with gusto. However, after years Who's of... gusto? <laughs> After years of trying to further my Is that career, a neighbor? Yes. By taking extracurricular studies and gaining qualifications, I find myself no further on. I'm undertaking my 10th job interview in 10 months soon. There's everything to play for, too, because while I've been desperately trying to carve out a new career for myself, my current employers have asked that in our team bonding session, we each carve out an image of ourselves in, wait for it, potato form. Yes, you read this right, as if the chips weren't down enough. So my question to you is, if I don't get this job, do I make the best of a bad situation and try to have a smashing time on Friday, or tell them to stick their Maris Pipers up their arse and see what else is cooking in this, this big wide world? Yours, hopefully, Emma. Well, I'm not really sure, Emma, what your, what your problem is. You're Emma. being asked to do a fairly juvenile team bonding exercise. Yeah. It sounds like you're in a bit of a pickle, but keep applying for that bit of a potato. What? What are you laughing at? What? Is that, what? Um, it's okay. What? There's a joke in there somewhere. I don't know where it, it sounds is. Sounds like but... you're in a bit of a pickled potato. I don't know. Um, oh, I'm having jacket potato tonight. Are you fantastic? Yeah. Uh, salmon and uh, salmon. Salmon on side. <laughs> salmon on side. <laughs> jacket potato, a bit of filly, some chive, and veg. Um, okay. Yeah, it sounds like you're in a bit of a pickle. Keep keep applying for the jobs. And look, if you, the team bonding things at mm. work, let me tell you, they are, you, everyone dreads them. We had to walk over hot coal at Rocky Femme once. You know, that <laughs> thing. Do you know what I mean? And we're all dreading it. I think, oh God, I've got emails there and stuff. But it's one of them that weren't once you, what? You've got emails today. I do have emails today. <laughs> right, you're all pissing me off today. Um, It'll be one of them. Once you do it, it'll be probably better than what you thought. A mm. bit of a laugh. So, yeah, just just go for it. Go, jump straight in and, and, and crack on. Yes. Uh, but, yes. yeah, Emma, I, I think, yeah, you're going to have to go along with the team bonding thing. It's a bit ridiculous, I, I grant you. But, yes, keep keep looking for jobs. Yeah. Keep, keep persevering. It's very hard. It is very hard. But you'll, you'll everything happens for a reason, and you'll find the one you want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from Chris. Hi, William Jordan, EPB and Diego. My partner and I got engaged shortly before my 30th birthday, and in our haste to let everyone know, we started plans straight away. We got our guest list pulled together, ordered our personalised save the dates, STDs, and got them all sent out. Is that what they're called? Well, that's what they've put here. Oh. And it got them all sent out. What we didn't realise, however, that was supposedly STDs are only to go out to those invited to the full day celebrations and not just the evening reception. Who knew? In our defence, neither of us have ever been married before. Therefore, how are we supposed to know? My dilemma is, how do I go about clarifying and uninviting around ooh, 70 people from the actual wedding who were only supposed to be invited to the evening reception? Oh, God. Kind as regards and much love, Chris. This is your area of expertise. Yeah. Oh. This is a problem, Chris. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and my advice, which is not helpful for Chris and his partner... But advice to everyone else is in the excitement of an engagement, just take a breath and consider what you're doing before you actually do it. Chris, you are right in that Save the Date cards, STDs, are only meant to go out to those that are coming to the full thing. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. I, yeah, I mean, I don't think any... look. Presumably, Chris, you're British, and most of your guests are British. I don't think they're actually going to make a, a fuss when the actual invitation goes through and they see it's evening reception only. Probably no one's going to say anything. Yeah. They might be livid with you, but no one's going to say anything. Don't worry about it. I thought you'd sent out the invitation saying you're coming to a day do, but you're not. So, yeah, the save a date. Save a date. It's the fine for an evening do. This isn't as bad as what I thought. I, however, and I've said this before, and I, I appreciate from a budget point of view, people can't, you know, you can't have 70, that's also not a small number, 70 people to the, to the whole thing. But I would rather, I mean, obviously I didn't have an evening do, as we, we know famously. Well, we did. Well, yeah, but officially I didn't. As in, yeah, you did one, I did not do one, or Mikey did not do one. But I would either, I'd rather people just came to the whole thing, rather than sort of like, oh, well, I like you, but not enough to spend 100 quid or whatever mm. it is per head for you to come to the main thing. I think that's worse than not being invited. I would rather not be invited to someone's wedding 
than be the also ran guest at the end of the day for rent a crowd. No, it's not that. And you did have an I do, and it was a proper I do. There was a scrap at McDonald's afterwards, and someone got sucked off in the cubicles. So it was a proper way to end a wedding. Am I wrong or am I wrong there? Thank you. So, night do Talk to me about McDonald's. I don't know about that. Oh, was it Alex? Yeah. Yes, I forgot that. Yeah, I have to Jumped over the counter because they were taking ages. I did know that. Yeah. Anyway. But I wouldn't worry about it too much. My... Brad's has sent me a save the day, and I don't know if I'm going to day do or night. Well, I uh, would assume as your brother. Tight on numbers. Well, true. And you do drink a lot, so. And we fell out the other week, mm. so. Yeah. I mean, we're friends now. But, uh, okay. Do you mean I drink a lot? Well, you could save a lot of money if he doesn't invite you. No, because they don't do free bars at most weddings up north I go to. Oh, okay, it's yeah. a cash bar. No, look, Chris, in answer to your question, I just don't think you can do anything. You just sort of send out the invitation. Maybe send out your invitations a bit quicker, a bit sooner than you would naturally have sent them out, so people at least can sort of release the day and make other arrangements. Um, but to be honest, if you have people that then say to you, oh, gosh, we can't wait to celebrate, it'll be so emotional seeing you get married, and they basically say something that infers that they're looking forward to the whole thing, I think you've got to just find a way to um, invite them to the whole thing. You are, lads. In my defence, right, when I was in McDonald's, um, I, I'd been waiting for, like, 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. Right, this is Jordan. For those that didn't hear the Amazon Music episode that went out, this is Jordan's, uh, again, very bad impression of... Um, Alex. Yes, but I came up with a name for him. Our video editor. Self-shoot Alex. Self-shoot Alex. So, in my defence... Um, I do sound like this, even though my mum's from Blackburn. Um, he doesn't. I I was waiting for 45 minutes, and they were taking ages, and I could see my food, so I jumped over the counter and grabbed my bag and ran off. So that's my defence. Cheers, Alex. Thank you. Um, he'll love that. He'll, he'll click, love that. He'll click that up and put it on his own Instagram <laughs> account, won't you, Alex? <laughs> this next one is from Sophie. Hi, William Jordan, EPB. I was recently in an airport in Germany... Oh, good and dark. Having treated oh, myself... God. Is that the one that's not opened yet? What? It's like their HS2. What's HS2? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. yeah. They've got a big airport in Berlin, haven't they, that's... They say it's a stain on German engineering, because obviously German's known for it, but it's an airport, isn't it? It's been open about 10 years, but not open. It's been a disaster. Gosh. Yeah. Do you not watch, do you not watch telly, you? No, not really. It's a really good documentary on it on BBC. Okay. It's in Berlin. Oh, sounds Sorry. The, sounds the worst. Having treated myself to a weekend away on my own. On landing, I found myself desperate for a wee, so once I was through passport control, I legged it to the closest facilities. I was struggling to work out which was the ladies, and given my desperate situation, I walked towards the only one that was clearly marked, the disabled loo. A man standing outside came running towards me, speaking in German. I do not speak... Technik. <laughs> It's the only bit of German I know. That's not even right. Boschbong Dung Technik. Boschbong Dung Technik. I, I do not speak German. No, neither does Jordan. So in a typical British fashion, I thanked him, gave him the thumbs up. Boschbong Dung Technik. And kept walking. He then started shouting at me a bit more urgently. And again, Boschbong Dung Technik. And I gave him a smile, nodded and carried on at speed to the loo. <laughs> on opening the door, his reasons became abundantly clear. The lock on the door was broken and he was trying to warn me that his wife was inside, sitting on the pot. <laughs> now, from his perspective, I had accepted this warning, thanked him for the heads up and popped in to see her. I'm mortified, probably more so than his wife was. The look he gave me was one of horror. What should I have done in this situation? How could I make sure this never, ever happens again? Thank you all. Love the pod. Sophie. You, you, you go on Google and you mm -hmm. type into Google Translator, how do you say, sorry for walking in on your wife having a shit in German? Yeah. Uh, or you just sort of say in your best British, well, in just in your normal accent, I'm so sorry I didn't understand. Yeah. Uh, with the, sort of the open palm gesture to show that you are, uh, you know, I, I mean you no harm. I did not understand. You make eye contact, you move on, you're probably never seeing them again. I wouldn't worry. That's for um, Mercedes, is it? Bosch Dong? Audi. Audi. How are you doing, partner? <laughs> no, Audi. 
Still got it. <laughs> Still got it. Did you ever have it? Still this is from it. Leisha. Dear William Jordan and producer Ben, I don't know if I'm, I'm over... Through again. Oh! <laughs> I don't really think there's much to say about that letter. Oh, they give some good advice. Yeah. Open palms. Yeah. Wash your hands afterwards. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Dear William Jordan and producer Ben. I don't know. Executive producer Ben. I don't know if I'm overreacting to the situation, so I'd like your advice. My boyfriend of four years and I live together and have done so for a few years, and I would consider us to be in a serious and committed relationship. Yeah. However, his stepmother recently gave him a handwritten letter and stated it was from a family friend. In the letter, the family friend said she had a major crush on my boyfriend and wondered if he'd been willing to go on a date for her. She provide with her. She provided her number and asked that he get in touch. My boyfriend contacted the family friend to politely decline the request, but I've since found out that his stepmother knew what was in the letter. I'm feeling disrespected by his stepmother. My boyfriend said he wasn't interested in the offer, therefore it doesn't matter, but I can't help feeling it was inappropriate for her to pass on the letter knowing what was inside. Am I overreacting to this? Or do you think it was inappropriate? Should I tell his stepmother she's crossed a line in case she decides to do it again on behalf of another girl? Many thanks, Leisha. I think she has. I think she completely has. Yeah, part of me was like, oh, she's only doing a friend for favour. But no, you say... If she knew what was in the letter... It's what you do. You go, it's so-and-so single. You go, no, they've, they've got a partner. they lived with them for four years. So, um... You all right? Yeah, what's that hanging out your handbag? It's an umbrella. Oh, God, it looks really... F looks like a sheep horn. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's my new umbrella. Anyway. Sorry. Um, I would... Yeah, I think, Leisure, you sit your stepmother down and say... Can we just talk about the letter, please? Yeah. Um, you knew what was in the letter, yes? And sort of, sort of let, and I mean this metaphorically, let her hang herself in that she sort of, don't, don't you go in with an accusatory, you need to be quite calm about it mm. and let her sort of explain her logic. And obviously, unless her logic is correct, which it isn't, she is just going to say something ridiculous and hopefully she sort of goes, oh, yes, no, I can see that was... Yeah. That was inappropriate. Could see the, what would you do if Mikey's mum handed you, handed Mikey a letter from? Well, I, uh, she wouldn't, but I would, I would sit her down and go, can I just talk about this, please? Can we just talk about this letter? Mm. Did you know what was in it? Knowing full well, I knew she did, let's say, hypothetically. Uh, and then again, I would let her explain herself. And then maybe I'd just go, I see. Yeah, good advice. Mm. But no, I, I, yes, you, you are right to feel disrespected. The only thing I would say, I mean, Good on you, Leisha. You're um, you're handling this relatively sensibly. Your boyfriend has said all the right things. So you could. The alternative is that you don't actually do anything. And you just go, OK, it's one to watch. And you move on. But at least your boyfriend said the right things. This last one is from Jake. Ooh. Dear Jordan and William. Dear William and Jordan. It's Jordan. William and Jordan does come off the tongue path. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up the liar. <laughs> About a year ago, I visited a friend of mine for, and his family for Sunday lunch. It was a lovely gathering, which was going very well until I was asked to get some drinks out of the refrigerator. My friend Andy is a bit geeky and loves fridge magnets. Not the kind that say best dad in the world, but the ones that could lift a car if tied to a crane. Incredibly powerful. Oh my wow. What? Incredibly powerful neo Diminium magnets. Neodiminium magnets. For student on the front of his fridge holding up various items like photographs and notebooks. Nothing wrong with that, I thought. Notebooks? Yeah. On like, fridge? Like little like jotters, to-do lists. Sadly, as I was about to open the door, my crotch was pulled at great speed towards it and I <laughs> became <laughs> fastened to an extremely large magnet. Oh, God. At first, I thought it was just the metal in my zipper. Oh, However, I was suddenly hit with searing pain in my nether region. No, he's got a Prince Albert. <laughs> Only the day before, I had a Prince Albert fitted to oh, my... Oh, the day before! <laughs> ...to my penis, and now, along with the magnet, was squeezing the life out of my todger. Oh, you must have been in agony. I tried not to scream, but failed miserably, causing my host to come running. I tried to make out that it was just my zipper, but the tears running down my face tipped them off that matters were far more serious. Oh, God! The day after, because I imagine it'd be pretty sore the day after. They managed to pull me away from the fridge, but the magnet remained tightly gripped to my Prince Albert. I won't go into detail as to how it was removed. Safe to say that Sean, the male nurse at the hospital, did a brilliant job in oh, between bouts of laughter. Good Jesus, God. 
For weeks, my old man looked like a thumb that had been hit with a hammer. What's his dad got to do with it? No, no, no. He means the... Oh. All I can say is, thank God I wasn't wearing a cock ring. Should I tell my friend the truth? Yours sincerely, Jake. Uh, uh, Yeah. Wow. Wow. You couldn't write this shit, could you? You couldn't back it up. Wow. This is why I don't have a a magnetic fridge. (laughs) Mine's an inbuilt one with a cupboard over it. I've, I've never really got cock rings. Not cock rings. <laughs> um, <laughs> Prince Albert's. Yeah. What, what's the attract? What do they do? No, don't I it, don't really know either. Don't it get in the way during intercourse? Potentially. But maybe we'll do this on a bonus. If, if you've got a cock <laughs> ring, get in touch. No, Help not, at sexofmyboss.com. Not a cock ring, a Prince Albert. Sorry. <laughs> if you've got a Prince Albert, get in touch. Help at sexofmyboss.com. Um, Jake, I, 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 I just tell your friend, own it. It's going to be one of those things that you laugh about for years. Yeah, I think. Look, it, how it, they're your friend. Yeah, how powerful are these magnets? I mean, that is a, that is a seriously strong magnet, and also badly positioned at crotch level. Oh God! Maybe been... note note to friends: any magnet should be at least chest height upwards. I mean, obviously, if they've got nipple clamps on there, they're stuck. Or a but... nipple piercing. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And also, I guess, what metal are Prince Albert's made from that well, would be attracted to a magnet? One that's attracted to a magnet. Yeah. Wouldn't be steel. Would, no, steel's magnetic. Copper yeah. isn't. No. Maybe we'll test it out. I'm not getting a Prince Albert. I'll go for a colonic. I am not getting a Prince Albert. God, no. I, I don't even like cutting my nails. Never mind. <laughs> I do. I cringe at cutting my nails. Because mm. through me. I'm potentially next year going to have to have an operation. Oh, is everything mm. okay? Was, yes, fine. Well, for now. On my eye. On my eyelid. Why? And I've got something called a ptosis with a silent P. And uh, Is that I, droopy eye? Yeah, in effect. And basically, as you get older and your muscles get weaker, the eye could droop more. And then basically, if the eyelid goes over the pupil, the eye will be switched off by the brain. So in order for me not to be blind in one eye, oh, this eye, I need to go and have this operation. So I've actually, I did actually phone the doctor this week and went, because I had a consultation a few months ago. Oh. And they said it's a four-month waiting list. And I thought, well, that'll basically be in line with the release of the book. So, no. Um, but now I'm thinking I probably need to have it done. So it might be January. Oh, how well. Did you, how did you find out? Oh, I've known about this ptosis for 10 years. Wow. Uh, when you're tired, it does go a bit more droopy, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Well, you would do buy one, get one free, Ben. I think that's how the how NHS works. Out? Sorry. How did you find out? I found out, Ben's asked me how we found out. I, 10 years ago, I went with my friend Paula in Dubai when I was working in Dubai. She went to go and have her Botox topped up. And I thought, and I'd never had Botox at this point. And I said, oh, if I have Botox, will that like glue it up? And he said, no, it's completely the worst thing to have for, if you have it to lift up the eyebrow, that's not what you need for a ptosis. It will actually have the opposite effect. He said, what you need is an operation. But he said, you're only 22, so you're fine for now. And basically I've just noticed it get worse and worse. And actually a few people in our comments Sometimes go, what's wrong with William's eye? Uh, and, oh, that's yeah, horrible. My eyelid. So I basically have to have my eyelid Sideboard. carved and uh, sewn up. Do you want us to sellotape it for next episode? <laughs> you can if you want. I'm going to look like Bambi next year. Big old eyes. But annoyingly, they only sedate you. They don't put you... I'd like general anaesthetic, please. Mm, well, but, yeah, they did that when my dad had snip. <laughs> It's only Gemma. Well, we've never talked about that. What, have we not? Well, I don't think so. I think I'd remember that. It's only Gemma anaesthetic. Yeah, they do it all. And was, it, was he in pain? Well, he'd come home and our Dominic jumped on him. <laughs> and he, was, he had to go back and get his stitches done. He tells the story better than me. I don't know where we're going with this. How old was Dominic? About five, six. Oh, right, okay. Fine. Basically, <laughs> had Bradley and thought, no more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he, he peaked with Bradley, really. I'd be like, if that was me, I'd have to... I've never had an operation, touch wood. Have you never? No. Well, you, you, OK, I'll have my eye and the colonic. You have the Prince Albert. Ben can... Again, like... Whatever. We talked about this. Surgeons, a bit like pilots, you wouldn't want them to sound like me, would you? No. You'd want them to be calming. Mm. Can you imagine if someone was about to, like, sort your droopy eye out or give you a snip? Hmm. Like, Hiya. How are you, man? Right, you're Jordan, right? I'm just going to snip into your bollocks and then I'm going to tie them up. And then you should be right. You'll be home in an hour, an hour and a half. You get a Greg's on the way home and a pasty life. 
No offence to any Geordies, but you know what I mean? Mm. Yes. Anyway, I'll keep, <laughs> we'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Uh, and we'll let you know how that goes. Well, I hope your eyes are okay. Thank you so much. I think we've got a few more months. There's, there's, a, there's a long way. Well, there's a four-month waiting list, I'm told, um, on the NHS. So we shall see what happens. As always, remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays. And you can share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sextedmyboss.com. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextedmyboss. And on the weekend release, I'm told, we're going to be testing out my olive eating method. Viral TikTok, let's bring it onto the podcast sphere. Okay. Test it out. Great. Uh, and also remember, Jean Devers, you can write to me, and in the fullness of time, I will send you a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greetings cards with executive self seal envelope. Jordan, where's the address if they want to? The address for that is on the website, sexandmyboss.com. We'll see you for the bonus episode on Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye.